Victoria, your wedding is in a month's time. Since your mom has refused to tell you this, I'll tell you because I can't allow you to get hurt like your mom and I. You are scaring me granny. What is it? I am afraid Victoria, but your marriage to Daniel cannot last. Grandma. Are you wishing me bad? Why will you tell me that? Calm down Victoria. You know, your mom and I have been trying our best to prevent you from getting married. But you are just too difficult to control Victoria. Your mom should have done this, but she couldn't face you. Granny. You are driving me crazy. What is happening? All right. I'll talk. There's this natural occurrence that happens to every female born in the family. Once their marriage is 10 years, the husband dies and if she attempts to marry any other man after the husband, the man will die. Also, if the woman tries adultery, such woman will die or run mad. She's to stay unmarried till she die. Unfortunately, death doesn't come easily for the female born in this family. Your great-grandmother is still hale and hearty. Here I am and so also is your mom. This has been happening for several years. I am only telling you this because of the love I have for you. I don't want you to suffer in life. I don't want to see you cry. This is a natural thing that happens in the family, and for your information, you will definitely have a female child as a firstborn if you insist on getting married and the cycle continues. There is nothing no one can do about it. Grandma. Are you serious? Even if you were serious about this, I am different grandma. This cannot happen to me. In fact, this chain of event has stopped and it will not continue on me. How Victoria? You are our blood. You can't escape it. Grandma. It is true that we are related by blood. But I have been saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, no evil will come near me. I am related to Jesus, I shall not die but live. Grandma, I now belong to the family of the Most High. No curse can stop me. If my Father in Heaven can permit me to get married and instruct me to be fruitful and multiply, who then can come out to tell me otherwise? No one Grandma. Victoria. Listen to me please, you need to know that I am a Christian too. And so also is your mom. This was how your mom acted years ago, until she lost your dad. I do not want this to happen again. This is not about Jesus Christ or any father in heaven Victoria. This is reality. Grandma. It happened to you and my mother, because you don't know who you are in Christ. I know my father, and my father knows me. Grandma, case closed. We can't have this conversation again. God knows that I have tried my best, Victoria. I wish you all the best in life. Grandma, I serve a God that is on the throne and not on the wheelchair. My God is capable. All right, Victoria. What if this is true? I am scared. Ah, I lost my dad when I was still very young. Is this going to happen to me again? I am really scared right now. This may happen to me. Ah, Daniel, I love Daniel so much. I don't want him to die. What do I do? Should I tell him about this? I am afraid. Daniel led me to Christ, I'll tell him. There must be solution to this, but I am doubting right now. Come and open the door for me. Why did you lock me in here? Your fears locked you in there. And you will never come out of that place. If only you have eyes, you will see that there are over a hundred of you in that place. They are your people, they are your blood. You deserve to be in same place. Mary and Sa fall together. You do not deserve to be separated from them. No, open the door for me. I do not want to be here. I am different, I am a child of God. I cannot suffer when I have Jesus Christ. Do you really trust him? Truly, you may be a child of God, 
but your fears and lack of trust in whom you called father put you there. You might have been redeemed before, but you are back in this prison because of your fear and you shall be locked up in this prison for life. Victoria, you are no longer different from the women in your generation. The chain continues. You shall partake in this curse. Who are you? Who are you to lock me up? I can see fears in your eyes. This is exactly what I used to deceive your mother. I am the demonic altar in your family who have put you all in everlasting bondage. Your forefathers created an altar for me in your family. And I have been reigning in your family since then. They have worshipped and fed me by committing all kinds of crimes. All of a sudden, you new generations neglected me and started serving another god. This made me curse everyone in the family, especially the first woman that introduced the family to Christianity. I will forever be in this lineage. No one can destroy me. I am begging you, please set me free. I am scared. This place is scary. <laughs> You've lost trust in whom you call father. What kind of dream is this? I remember I was in a padded cell, but I can't even remember who I was talking to. This is getting scarier than I thought. I need to see Daniel. Good morning, Mom. I am going to see my fiancé. I'll be back soon. Victoria. Mom. Come and sit beside me. We need to talk. All right, Mom. Victoria, Grandma told me she spoke with you last night. I don't want you to feel bad, but I think I need to let it out now. My dear daughter, as I sit here, my heart heavy with the burden of our family's misfortune, I feel compelled to share with you the truth that has haunted our lineage for generations. It pains me to say this, but it seems that every first female born into our family is destined to suffer the loss of her husband after ten years of marriage. I know you've seen the loneliness that has consumed me since your father's passing, and you may wonder why I have not remarried. The truth, my dear, is that I cannot bear the thought of putting another man's life at risk, for it is said that any man who marries a firstborn daughter of our family will meet his demise soon after, and the woman herself may be driven to madness. I love you more than words can express, and it breaks my heart to think that you might one day face the same fate. I serve God faithfully, yet I cannot understand why this curse continues to plague us. All I know is that I would never wish this pain upon anyone, especially not my beloved daughter. Please know that my decision to remain alone and to prevent you from getting married is not a lack of love or faith, but rather a desperate attempt to protect you from the cruel hand of fate that has befallen our family. I pray that God will guide us and protect you from harm, and that one day, this curse will be lifted, and you will find the happiness and love you deserve. Please, bear with me and listen to me. You can't get married now. My dearest mom, listening to you brought tears to my eyes, for I never truly understood the depth of your sacrifice until now. The loneliness you've endured, the burden you've carried, all to protect me from a fate you know all too well. I cannot begin to imagine the pain you've felt losing dad and facing the prospect of never remarrying for fear of causing harm to another. Your love for me shines through every word, and I am grateful beyond words for your selflessness. It breaks my heart to know that this curse hangs over our family, threatening to rob us of love and happiness. But know this, mom, your sacrifice has not been in vain. Your love and protection have been my shield, and I will carry your strength and courage with me always. I pray that one day, the darkness that surrounds our family will be lifted, and we will find peace and happiness once more. Until then, I promise to honor your sacrifice, to live my life with courage and love, and to never forget the incredible woman who gave everything for her daughter. Mom, I'll meet with Daniel and explain to him the situation. I'd rather remain single forever than to be the reason for Daniel's death. I'm trusting God, Mom. Please stay strong, while we wait on God for help. Thank you, daughter. I am so grateful. You can go and talk to him now. This is painful to do, Mom. 
but I'll try, just for the sake of our future. This is tough. Victoria, why are you crying? What's the problem? Talk to me please. Daniel, you are a great man, and I love you so much. I know we've prayed about this and we are meant for each other, but I am sorry, I can't continue the wedding plans with you again. I am doing this because I love you and I want to see you alive. I don't want to cause everlasting pain for us. Please, respect my wish and let's cancel the wedding. All right, calm down Victoria. I am sure there must be reason for this. Please, talk to me. Daniel, my love, there's something I need to share with you, something that has weighed heavily on my heart since last night. In my family, there's a curse, a terrible fate that seems to befall every firstborn daughter. It's hard to put into words, but it's like a dark shadow that hangs over us, casting a pall of sorrow and loneliness. You see, every firstborn daughter in my family loses her husband after ten years of marriage. It's a cycle of heartbreak and loss that has haunted us for generations. And it's not just that. There's a belief that if I were to marry again, my husband would die, and I might even lose my sanity. I can't bear the thought of bringing that kind of pain into your life, of putting you at risk. But I also can't deny how much I love you, how much I want to spend my life with you. It's a cruel dilemma, one that tears me apart inside. I serve God faithfully, just like my mother and her mother before her. But I can't help but wonder why this curse continues to plague us. All I know is that I couldn't bear to see you suffer because of me. I want you to know the truth, to understand the weight of this burden I carry. But more than anything, I want you to know how much I love you, and how desperately I wish things could be different. Coupled with that, I had a dream last night that I was in a cell, locked in there and I could hear voices around me but I couldn't see anyone. I do not want to drag you into this cage which might mean bondage. Please, forgive me if this revelation brings you pain. My heart is yours, now and always, but we can't get married. Victoria, my dearest love, I hear your words, and I understand the fear and uncertainty that you feel. But I want you to know that I serve a living God, a God of miracles and redemption. I refuse to accept this curse as our fate, for I believe in His power to break every chain and overcome every obstacle. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 41, 10, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I declare this promise over our lives, that God's strength and protection will surround us, and no harm shall come near us. In Psalm 91, 7, it says, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. I stand on this truth, knowing that no matter what challenges may come our way, God is our protector and shield. I refuse to live in fear of what might happen, for I know that God is greater than any curse or darkness. I declare with faith and conviction that nothing will happen to us, for we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will stand by your side, my love, and together we will face whatever comes our way, knowing that God is with us. I am just scared Daniel. I don't want to lose you. Victoria, I hear your fears, but I can't help but wonder if you're forgetting who you are in Christ and whose child you are. We serve a God who is bigger than any curse or fate. He is a God of miracles and redemption, and He has promised to protect and guide us. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You are not called to live in fear, but in faith and confidence in God's promises. Remember the story of Esther, who faced great danger but trusted in God's plan and saved her people. She didn't let fear dictate her actions, but instead, she trusted in God's wisdom and guidance. Most people are still in the bondage of family altars and curses, not because they are not born again, but because they still allow their spirit of fear in their lives. 
they refuse to trust that the problem has been solved. As a Christian, we need to trust God at all times, it is a difficult thing to do, but trust me, if we can overcome fear and trust God, then our problems are over. You might have dreamt that dream, because you allowed the spirit of fear take over, the devil convinced you and robbed you of your status and you followed suit. Victoria, as your name suggests, I believe that we can overcome this challenge, not by giving in to fear, but by trusting in God's power and provision. Let's stand together in faith, believing that God is with us and that he will make a way where there seems to be no way. We will fast and pray and we will come out victorious. Victoria, we will have this wedding by the grace of God. I, Daniel shall not die now, and not in ten years to come. We will have children in our vineyard, both male and female kids. This is the promise of God for us. Go back home and tell mom and grandma that we serve a living God. We have a great altar that is greater than all other altars. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow. Therefore, every altar that is not of God in your family shall be destroyed. We shall have a personal three days fasting and prayer and we'll come together the last day to pray and break all family altars. Victoria, you are mine and I'm yours, in Jesus' name. This makes me feel alive. Thank you for your words, Daniel. You are a great man of God. You have boosted my faith, I'm no longer afraid. If you are not afraid, then who am I to be fearful? Lord Jesus, forgive me for being fearful. I trust in you and your word. I am sorry for allowing the spirit of fear take over me. Lord Jesus, I surrender everything unto your hands now. That's how conquerors act. Go home and talk to mom now. Victoria, what was Daniel's reaction when you told him about the situation? Mom, the question would have been, what was God's reaction when you told him about the situation years ago and you decided not to trust him? When we complain to God about the situation in our lives, should we just fold our hands without doing anything? Or should we just worry and complain without trusting God? You prayed to God, Mom. But did you believe and trust God enough that the problem was over? Didn't you allow fear to take over your prayers and made your prayers to become a waste? You surely told God, but he wasn't happy with the fact that you didn't believe him enough to save you from that situation. Same thing is about to happen to me, but thank God for his grace. God is not happy with us whenever we don't trust him enough or we are still afraid. We are simply telling him that he's not capable. Mom, so many people say that you shouldn't dare things. But I know whom I serve. My God is mighty. It is time we destroy this family altar against female firstborns. Do not allow your fears limit you. You've been praying for years for breakthrough, so also is Grandma, but have you thought about what might be delaying your prayers? Fear of unknown. Mother, let go of fear. You have me when you were 23 years old, and I am currently 24 years old now. You're still in your late 40s. Mom, you won't be lonely forever in Jesus' name. We will fight and win this battle in the name of Jesus. Daniel has proposed three days of intense fasting and prayers. He said we will all come together and pray on the third day and we shall go ahead with the wedding. Mom. We serve a living God. I believe so much in God and I have let go of fear. With God, all things are possible. You are right, daughter. I have been living in fear all the days of my life. I only confess Christianity just by mouth, but I haven't trusted God enough to deliver me. Ah? Daughter, we will observe the fasting and prayer alongside your grandma. Every aggressive evil altar priests, scatter your altars and die, in the name of Jesus. As from today, I refuse to allow the spirit of fear in me. I conquer my fears in Jesus' name. As from today, I destroy evil invitations in the evil altars against my life and that of my family members, in the name of Jesus. I block the entrance and exit gates of evil altars against my destiny, in the name of Jesus. My destiny, come out from altars of darkness, 
in the name of Jesus. Evil deposits in my life from the evil altars come out and enter no more, in the name of Jesus. Any satanic masquerade or snake attacking my life from the evil altars, die and die again, in the name of Jesus. Any power troubling me from any evil foundation, loose on my life, in the name of Jesus. You gorillas of anointing in this land, I am not your candidate. Forsake me by fire, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, pull me out from stubborn altars that have vowed to render me useless, in the name of Jesus. Fire of death burning me from the evil altar. Disappear by force, in the name of Jesus. Any generation and curse in my life with stubborn weapons, die, in the name of Jesus. Any congregation of demons against me, scatter, in the name of Jesus. Anything I owe to evil powers, blood of Jesus, pay for me now, in the name of Jesus. Effect of strange hands that has touched me before, disappear, in the name of Jesus. For deliverance, begin to take place in my life and in my family without hindrance, in the name of Jesus. I destroy every family demonic altars tormenting my family in Jesus' name. Hey, you aren't even more than this. You are the one tormenting my family for years, depriving us of joy and happiness. If only they know that you are too small, they won't have bowed to you all these years. My eyes are opened, the God I serve is greater than you. You demonic altar, you are nothing in the eyes of my Father in heaven. Do you know where you belong? into the lake of fire. I no longer fear that person who can only kill the flesh, but doesn't have control over my soul. I belong to God. So much audacity. Weren't you the one begging me a while ago? Who gave you so much confidence? I was begging you because I didn't know how mighty my Father in heaven is. I was begging you because I didn't know the greatness of my God. I serve a God greater than you and all your cohort, the one who will pass your judgment. You tried by putting me in fears, but now, I no longer have fear. You know better, that the only thing you can do is to make me afraid, and you don't have the power to do otherwise. You put human beings in the bondage of fear and that's how you make evil happen to them. This has to stop. Zechariah 4, 7 says, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh, your time is up here. I cannot keep someone that is not afraid of me in captive. Victoria, leave this place immediately, you no longer fear me. You now know who you are and I won't allow you to destroy me before I get destroyed. I still need more souls to accompany me to hell. Leave here now. I won't only leave, I want you to stop tormenting my family. I want you to leave my family alone. I command you in the name that is above every other name, that in the name of Jesus Christ, you should leave now. And I destroy the altar in which you have created for yourself in my family in Jesus' name. I will leave. Hallelujah. Victoria. Are you going to leave your grandma and I in this prison? Please help us out. They have been released, but they will be free, only when they let go of their fears. O oh Lord my God, every evil altar my family has offered me to, tonight deliver and set me free indeed in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, anyone that has brought captivities into my life, Tonight lose me and let me go in Jesus' mighty name. O Lord rise and pursue all my pursuers, let them fall and never rise again in Jesus' name. My Father, arise and trouble my troublers in the name of Jesus. From tonight henceforth, let no man trouble me for I bear in my body the mark of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Father, save me from those enemies within and without that has vowed to keep me in bondage. Let them be scattered by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Father tonight, deal with every household enemy working against my future in Jesus' name. Thank you Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Hallelujah. Father, 
Deliver me and my family from any form of infirmities in our bloodline in Jesus' name. Father, let your judgment destroy every evil hand working evil in my life and family in Jesus' name. My Father, my Maker, by your right hand carry me above principalities and powers in Jesus' name. Father, every principalities and power that have put me and my generation into any form of bondage, in your mercy deliver us tonight in Jesus' name. O Lord my God, let your light shine and expose every secret of darkness working against our destinies in Jesus' name. Father, rain fire from heaven and destroy every evil altar in my life and that of my children in the name of Jesus. Every evil altar that my name is mentioned upon, in the name of Jesus catch fire now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for the victory, in the name of Jesus. I take authority over my father and mother's house, in the name of Jesus. I challenge my father and mother's house with the fire of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God, expose, disgrace and destroy all the darkness in my father's house, in the name of Jesus. I nullify and destroy all the worship with Baal, marine spirits, witchcraft spirits, occult spirits and serpentine spirits in my father's house, in the name of Jesus. I disconnect my family and I from any covenant with devil, in the name of Jesus. We break loose from the bondage and dominion of family altars, in the name of Jesus. I overthrow every demon sitting on the throne of my life, in the name of Jesus. Every evil priest standing on the altar of evil prophesying against my life slash family, be roasted by fire, in the name of Jesus. Any prophesy from the altar of evil, against my family, be nullified by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I recover every good thing which devil have stolen from my family, in the name of Jesus. Let all my prosperity that has been swallowed up by any Baal be vomited out, in the name of Jesus I close every bloodline of idol worshipping in my father's house, in the name of Jesus. I raise an altar unto the Lord in my father's house, in the name of Jesus. I neutralize all the sacrifices and ritual that has been offered to Baal by my father's house, in the name of Jesus. Every evil marriage between me and any altars in my father's house break and release me by fire, in the name of Jesus. Georgina, we are out. We are out of that prison. Mother. At last. We are out. We've been there for so many years. Where is Victoria? Grandma. Mother. I have been waiting for you since. I am here. What was that? Hallelujah. The Lord is merciful. Thank you, Jesus. May your name alone be praised. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance from evil, for your protection and guidance in the face of adversity. You have been our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer, and I give you all the glory and praise. Lord, I also thank you for the gift of family and the blessing of home. I pray that you would help us establish a family altar, a place where we can come together to worship you, to pray, and to seek your face. May our home be a sanctuary where your presence dwells, where love and peace abound. Help us, Lord, to be faithful in our devotion to you, to set aside time each day to seek you in prayer and in the reading of your word. May our family altar be a place of unity and strength, where we can draw closer to you and to one another. Thank you, Lord for your faithfulness and your unfailing love. May our lives be a testament to your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. In many cultures, the concept of family altars holds significant spiritual weight. These altars are seen as a focal point for family worship, prayer, and spiritual connection. However, when these altars become tainted by demonic influences, they can lead to generational patterns of destruction and despair. Consider the story of Victoria's family, where every first female-born's husband dies ten years after marriage. 
This tragic pattern may seem rooted in fate or coincidence, but it often masks a deeper spiritual issue. Yet, the truth is that fear and lack of trust in God can often be the very things that keep these destructive patterns in place. When individuals and families allow fear to dictate their actions and beliefs, they inadvertently give power to the very forces they seek to overcome. Many people unknowingly contribute to the formation of demonic altars in their families through their thoughts, words, and actions. When they constantly speak of generational curses or accept negative patterns as inevitable, they are essentially reinforcing these destructive forces. Examples of these negative words include people that often say they die early in their family, they don't give birth early in their family, they don't get educated in their family, they don't get married on time in their family and so much more. Instead, we must be proactive in creating godly altars in our families. We must speak life, blessing, and prosperity over ourselves and our loved ones. We must renounce fear and trust in God's plan for our lives, knowing that He has the power to break every chain and set us free from every generational curse. So, let us be mindful of the altars we are building in our families. Let us tear down the demonic altars of fear and negativity and replace them with altars of faith, hope, and love. And let us speak words of life and blessing knowing that God is faithful to fulfill His promises and to bring restoration and healing to our families. God bless you all. Fear and lack of trust in God can be powerful forces that hinder us from experiencing the fullness of God's blessings in our lives. However, the Bible reassures us that we do not need to be afraid, for God is with us and will strengthen us. Isaiah 41, 10 says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Every demonic family altar in your life is destroyed now in the name of Jesus.